We are uh, here for, we're doing our presentation on time banks, and the members here are myself, which I'm Patricia Simmons, and that's Kara, and that's Laura, everybody knows. <laughs> but we just want to introduce ourselves. What we, what we did, our community presentation is on time banks, and time banks is a community of individuals within a community that help by serving each other and they spend what they call time dollars and you help each other by serving with your services whatever talents that you have and you can spend two hours of your time and get two hours worth of time dollars and then in turn I could get two hours worth of time dollars spent on some services that I might need. We serve and help with the Plymouth Canton area and the purpose of our project was to increase the inclusion and the, um, the members um, to help them to gain more access to more consumers as well as homeowners or just neighbors in the, within the community and to build the social bonds amongst that community. We have our community collaborators. One is here, Kim Hodge. We want to thank her for being here. Um, the other person that we worked very closely with was Anna, Anna Marie Graham Hoddit, am I saying it right? Yeah. Hoddit? And she lives in Plymouth, Canton as well. She lives in Plymouth as Plymouth, Okay. So, um, and then we had a couple other people that were from PCCBI, and that stands for the Plymouth Canton Citizens Diversity Initiative. Um, we also had a couple other people that we worked with, Emily Novak, which is a community opportunity center. She's there. And then Kevin Lane, who is the principal at Starkweather. And Starkweather is an alternative school for girls and boys. And Mr. Stan Oswinski, he's also a PCCBI. Okay, so um, just to talk a little bit more about PCCDI and what that means for um, the Western Wayne County Time Bank is the Plymouth County um, Citizens for Diversity and Inclusion is really trying to push um, and create a, a more diverse and inclusive um, community within themselves. So as you saw, there were a few members of PCCDI that were our key contacts, as well as um, Emily, who worked with the community um, the Community Opportunity Center, um, which was, uh, she's our contact with members of the Plymouth Canton community that um, are the disabled community, and um, Kevin Lane, who is the president of Starkweather High School, um, which is an alternative high school um, in Plymouth. And we went there um, to present time banks to the students. It was one of the priorities of um, the PCCDI group. Um, and so we went one afternoon, the three of us and Anne-Marie, we went to each classroom and spoke to the students about time banks and where they where they could fit in. A lot of them have community service requirements, whether it's for um, probation reasons or they can get school credit if they do community service. So um, the school was working with time banks to give this opportunity to the students, um, and they could stock up on their hours and finish those requirements and get their credits and things like that. So we went and we spoke to all the classes about time banks. Um, we assisted them with the application and skills inventories. Um, we provided details, like I said, just basics about the project. And um, we got down their names and numbers for follow-up. Many of them are under 18, so they had to bring their applications home to be signed by a parent. Unfortunately, many of them did not then bring back their application, but that's something we'll talk about later, um, the importance of follow-up with within Starkweather, but the entire time bank as a whole. So. Um, canvassing, you were all a part of on the 27th. Um, it was pretty cold and we went down, <laughs> downtown Plymouth. Um, our role in that was we created the rap sheets, gathered all, all the materials, staked out the area, um, kind of got a feel for everything. Um, you guys were integral in, in the canvassing da um, that day and we went to, as you know, businesses and local homes. Um, they, we recorded the contact information for follow-up. Then there were com three community meetings were held throughout our time working with time banks. Um, they had these scheduled um, well in advance. We had been speaking about them since our first meeting with them. Um, they were held at different coffee shops all over Plymouth and Canton. And this was just a way to kind of get our faces out there and our information, sit down, talk to people who were interested, maybe talk to people who weren't even there to learn about time banks. They were just getting a cup of coffee, kind of hand them a brochure and um, 
convince them to join. Um, <laughs> and so I went to the one on Saturday, October 30th, which was um, held at Big Boy, which is a breakfast place in Canton. And um, unfortunately, there was low turnout there. Um, but it was a, a good opportunity. I got a lot out of it because I got to spend time talking with Anne-Marie as well as a few other um, key stakeholders who had already been involved in time banks. And we kind of got to get all on the same page and talk about why everyone was interested and why everyone was there. Definitely. Um, and I attended, yeah, yeah. Um, I attended um, the community meeting in Wayne, um, and that was at the Karma Coffee Shop. And again, um, it was a little disappointing. I can echo what Kara said as well, just because there wasn't, um, I think there was one community member who came out to that meeting as well. And there were people within the coffee shop and just what I, what I definitely learned was just going out into the community. Um, even talking with people at the coffee shop was a good way just to have a little bit of contact. But one of the main lessons that we definitely learned from the community meetings um, was just really the, the importance of follow-up and also um, the, the plan of attack, <laughs> for lack of better terms. So um, within this specific community, as Patricia was saying, um, the main issue within the public camp community is the issue of inclusion. Um, because it is a fairly diverse community, but it is also like um, a middle, middle to upper class um, community as well. And so with that, um, there comes a big issue of of inclusion and really um, <coughs> valuing the, your neighbor. And um, I don't know if you all remember, but Amina was also one of our uh, key community collaborators. And she also um, was um, at the canvassing day in Plymouth. And she was telling us a story about um, one community member um, of, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the ethnic background was, but they had like, a big brick thrown through their window, and that's kind of what sparked the whole um, creation of the PCCDI. And so um, with with that main issue in mind, um, I just think that the, it would be a lot more useful for us to go to big meetings like a Rotary Club meeting or um, like a school like we did or other ways just because, um, and also just to do more canvassing um, efforts and just to really like follow up with that. Because um, our efforts definitely were learning that we were planting seeds, <laughs> like little seeds, little by little. But um, if we could do it over the so I kind of touch on this a little bit, but it is a very um, ethnically diverse community, um, and so the main um, the main hope for the Time Banks project within this community is just to um, reduce social social is isolation isolation <laughs> and just to really um, encourage like different just um, different social identities within the community and people just to really like come together so one of our main um, one of the main things we talked about in our very first meeting was um, the at the community opportunity center which is that the center for um, adults with disabilities and the stark weather students which is alternative high school um, although these two groups of people might not always interact with each other. They have definitely like a lot to teach one another. So it's like the main mission. Um, and yeah, I touched on this a little bit as well, but the main lessons learned, um, we have very good communication um, with our community collaborators and with Kim and also with each other. We worked all together as a team. Um, our Stark Weather Outreach and, and canvassing efforts, um, that was kind of where we were planning the seeds. And I think our, our efforts definitely did lay a foundation. Um, the PCCDI just hired um, a part-time staff member to work directly with um, the Time Banks effort. And so I all of, all of the materials that we gathered and all the experiences that we have, we were able to pass that on to the staff member. And um, already they've gone to a Rotary Club meeting and um, they said last night that they have lots of people signed up. So that was very good to hear. Um, and some things that we would do to put um, more canvassing efforts. And we were also thinking it would be very helpful to hold time based orient orientation sessions every week. So when you do the follow up, you can say we have this session every Monday at this time. Um, and so that was one of our, our main suggestions. And uh, thank you. <laughs> this is our picture. <laughs> so, 
Thank you so much. Questions? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Have you seen positive results from our campus? Um, yeah, the, the main, we yeah, gave so cool. campus in downtown Plymouth to, to the businesses and also to the community members as well. And like I said, um, from what, what we were advertising kind of there was the, the community like collaboration meeting. It was more so just an information session. And that was held at the Panera Bread. And again, there was only one or two people who showed up to that. So, um, but from that, we kind of brainstormed this idea of going to the Rotary Club. And that was awesome. Also, Terry, the um, new coordinator that Timex has hired, has a lot of connections within the Plymouth community. So she's, um, Anne Marie has told us, has taken our information and identified the people she knows or the people that she has contact with on a regular basis to kind of drop them in. So that was definitely a learning moment is that a woman who lives within the community has more of a pull and more, um, or, or can be affected in different ways than we can. So, so I have a question about do you see any, what were the lessons, if any, that you could draw from a time bank that was started <clears throat> by an organization, not a staffed organization yet, but are there differences that you could tell from the other time banks from, you know, that they had work, been working towards this diversity inclusion initiative and that, that they were making time bank a piece of that, a tool for that? Do you have any observations or lessons to share? I mean, that came into my mind a lot. Um, not only is the fact that this time bank is part of an organization evident in ways such as that they have certain pulls with grants and things like that, but also the, the idea and the push for inclusion was very different, I feel, than um, many of the other motives for time banks all over. Um, so it, it was more, a little bit, maybe some of you can speak to this also, canvassing, trickier to get people invested when you're like, this is a way to build community instead of this is a way you can get something out of it. Um, so I, I know many of you can speak to that with your, um, uh, experiences with canvassing with us, but also in your own time banks. Um, so definitely, it was it was a different a different way to go about presenting time banks and why this was effective and beneficial for um, the community. Mm -hmm. well, 